This activity starts off with a mental reminder of what it means to square and square root, because we're going to have to estimate a lot of unknown squares and square roots as the activity goes on. So as to warm up, can you remember how to find the area of a square of side 4, of side 6? If you know the area, how do you find what the length of one side? And remember, it is a square, not a rectangle. And you're going to try that for other squares. Can you list all the square numbers you can think of and then use these to try and work out the square roots of n squares that are not perfect, like the square root of 43, resulting in a decimal answer, or the square root of 70? What about cubes and cube roots? How would we find the volume of this cube? There's one layer. How many of those layers would entirely fill this cube? Is there a quick number method of doing that? If you know the volume, how would you find the side length of one of these cubes? And remember, a cube is a 3D square. What about this one? And then can you list all the cube numbers you can think of? Estimates are our starting point for solving equations by trial and improvement, where the balance method won't work. X squared is 30. Well, 5 squared is 25. 6 squared is 36. So it's probably going to be a number a little over halfway between 5 and 6. And that's how I start my estimate. The Excel sheet gives you feedback. You cannot click on cells where there are formulae that you're not required to edit, only where you are to enter your estimates. This is too big, so I need to try something smaller. Still too big. And eventually you can hone it down until you're within one decimal place of the answer. Try these two. Then try some harder equations. This is squaring the number and then adding 15 to get 20. So you know that 5 plus 15 is 20. What number squared is close to 5? Well, 2 squared is 4, so it's going to be a bit bigger than that. It's key that you estimate first to get close to what the answer possible solution may be. In trial and improvement, you get asked to solve problems to 1, 2 or 3 decimal places. Your teacher will demonstrate briefly what that means and then it's up to you to have a go at some of these questions to see if you can solve them to one decimal place, three decimal places or two decimal places. Be careful when you answer, it will only accept an answer to the given number of decimal places. Here's a quick insight into what that might mean. To one decimal place you may have this solution, to two decimal places a solution will look like more like this and then to three decimal places you'll be able to get ever closer to the actual number itself. This shows you the difference between your estimate and the actual answer looked for. Best of luck.